All right, coffee's done. All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video with me, the Seattle Data Guy. Today, we want to cover the challenges you will face uh, in the data product lifecycle. So this is for anyone who is building some sort of data product. This, this could be a dashboard, a model, a report, or whatever it might be. These are, these are generally the problems you will face while you're building some sort of data product. Before going any further, if I could just ask for one quick favor, if you guys could just like this video, uh, you know, helps the YouTube algorithm. Also, I've noticed that many of you who watch my videos aren't subscribed. If you like this content, please do subscribe um, or, you know, comment if you'd like some other specific content from someone who's been doing a lot of data work in the last few years in fields like transportation, finance, insurance, healthcare, uh, social media, etc. Just, you know, like and subscribe and uh, provide some uh, requests. Uh, and without further ado, let's get into this video. Guys, right, just I had to move myself up to the top corner. Uh, I was in the way. Uh, so the data product life cycle, in theory, kind of looks a little bit like this. Uh, generally, in the center of all of this should always be, and I do this with all my clients, it should always just be a focus on your business goals and your business questions that you're trying to answer, right? Like you shouldn't be trying to uh, just deploy a model for the sake of deploying a model. There should be really a focus on trying to answer and drive actual business goals and business questions. So that's why I always put it kind of in the center um, of this slide. Now, once you have some goals and clear questions that you're trying to answer or push forward, then you can start going on the next steps, uh, starting with, of course, the data. Um, this is generally the very first step. Uh, you know, if I'm working with a client, I will generally, you know, take a moment to see what data they have, talk about the data they have, maybe look into what data uh, exists externally, um, just, just to get a good understanding of what is possible. Are the questions and goals that the client or business is setting out to answer or work for um, even possible. So that's generally step one, right? You're gonna do some data gathering, most likely. Uh, if you don't have the data, you're gonna set up some sort of data management system. If you don't already have it in place, this could be a data warehouse, a data lake, a data lake house, um, as I have seen coined a lot recently. Um, then generally you'll do some light data analysis uh, before you kind of go too far forward. You know, you don't wanna spend a bunch of time planning out a product if the data that you have can't even answer the question that you want or if you try to answer that question and there's no real value there you know you might find that um you're trying to create a model or an algorithm that really provides no value you know even though you think you can maybe prove when there's fraud maybe you can't based off the models that you're trying to develop um and so that would be a lot of wasted time so just some light data analysis that can at least hint you towards going the right direction um, from there, you will spend some time doing some modeling logic. Uh, model, in this case, I'm not referring to data modeling. I'm referring more to, you know, if you're doing ML or data science work, you're going to probably do that uh, based off of, you know, your, your analysis. Uh, you're going to start driving and doing some sort of testing and work in that direction. Um, then you'll set up some model data and logic QA, right? Like this, you generally should have some sort of test cases just to ensure that, you know, your model or logic is producing the thing that you think it should. Uh, and this is just general QA. Um, there's also testing, which is a necessary step, uh, whether you're doing, again, data science or uh, just general business logic. And so that's generally the testing phase. From there, there should be some sort of deployment uh, setup. This can be, you know, version control, some sort of build artifacts, deploying to production, et cetera. Those are like steps that are standard, uh, specifically more in software, but I think are becoming more prevalent in uh, the data world as, as things like dbt and other tools are coming out there that can really help you develop an actual workflow with your your data so your sql doesn't just have to be some ad hoc thing it can actually be version controlled and and in turn you can ensure that if things change you're aware of those changes and can always revert back if things break um, and after that what's very important is monitoring and this is important especially whether it's models or just business logic, you want to actually see if one, it acts differently uh, in production, right? Like maybe it takes up way too much uh, CPU, maybe it's whatever, but there are other things like, is it actually driving the KPIs and business goals that you set out in the first place? So this is generally where you want to make sure you have some sort of tracking uh, metrics for success set up early. So this means like, let's say you've got a model and you're trying to optimize pricing, right? You're, you're trying to improve pricing. Well, in turn, you probably want to see a pretty basic metric here uh, improve, which is just sales, right? Or conversion or something like that. It, it, it kind of does depend on the business goal, but you want to see some sort of KPI metric switch or improve. So you should have those already planned out in the beginning, right? Some sort of monitoring that shows that, hey, yes, this model is doing what we think it is. So there's, there's the aspect of a more of an operational monitoring, but there's also an aspect of um, monitoring to actually make sure that 
the KPIs and business goals that you had set out in the first place are actually improving. And so this is the data product lifecycle in theory. But here's the thing. There are a lot of challenges you face in this whole process. And here's kind of where you will see the various uh, challenges arise uh, in the various steps. So starting with business goals and business questions that you're trying to answer, uh, you're going to see people focus on hype uh, versus impact. So this is just natural, right? Like whether you're a business person or a tech person, we both kind of do this. We read an article, we read about some other competitor that's doing something similar to us or better than us, and we want to do it. Uh, regardless of if it aligns with your business goal, uh, the problem that you'll run into here uh, that I've seen many companies have is you don't necessarily have all the resources or employees to actually move forward with that new strategy. So maybe you build a model um, that works perfectly, but maybe you can't actually act on it. Like maybe you need to deploy it to uh, production, but you don't have enough software engineers, or maybe you need, it's a fraud detection model and you need people to go and then adjudicate claims in healthcare, but you don't have enough people or staff uh, or budget to do any of those things. Um, so that doesn't align with your business goals. So you need to make sure, first of all, you don't focus too much on hype, but you focus on your impact as well as things that align with your business goals. The other big issue is a lack of communication. Um, so this generally happens, you know, the business might have goals and uh, the data people might think they understand those goals just through, you know, natural loss of information. They might not fully understand it. And then you have this lack of communication. Uh, generally, this can be fixed by, you know, doing integrating more of the business team with the data team, make sure they meet more often as the product is being built, et cetera. So those are, that's just to start as far as problems go. From there, um, data problems uh, that I've seen arise for many clients. First is just patch together work, data workflows. You know, people were rushed or maybe they didn't have a, a big enough team or maybe it was an experienced team and they built a workflow that was, you know, an, in a combination of some cron jobs, Python scripts, uh, CSVs, JSON config files, it's all just kind of put together and it's not sustainable, right? Like this might be okay if you're a very small company that that only has one report that runs once a year, uh, you know, you're, it's not great to have, but there's no reason to change it because it would be very expensive, I assume. But if you're a company that needs these reports every day, every week, having a system like this will inevitably fail uh, as soon as someone leaves the company. A uh, lack of data ownership is more prevalent for larger companies, right? Like data just exists in the space. No one really owns it. No one really takes care of it. And, and just through time, that data gets worse and worse over time because, you know, maybe the data source changes, maybe the pipelines start to fail uh, and there's no clear ownership. And there's a lack of data QA. Uh, this depends on the companies again, but, you know, making sure you have some sort of scripts that just check to make sure that your data is accurate or makes sense. I've seen the funniest uh, data problems. Um, and I think there was that one example once where they showed the different ways Philadelphia was spelled in one data set. And I think it was like 30 or 40 different spellings or references. Uh, similarly, you know, I've seen issues where state codes, you know, there was actually bad state codes, which is weird. You think there's only so many state codes and you think that wherever the application uh, was getting that data, it would be checking for valid state codes, but it clearly hadn't been. Um, and so you're getting bad data. And so making sure you have QA, uh, at least at your analytical layer. It should be hopefully in your application layer, but if you don't have it there, some quick just checks to make sure you're getting the right inputs um, so that your model or dashboard doesn't break in the future. Um, the big thing I've seen for uh, modeling and logic is a lack of peer reviews. So modeling and logic, you would think that these things would be treated just like code, right? These are often pieces of technology that will drive 10,000, 100,000 million dollar decisions but sometimes there's no QA on them, right? Like you write a SQL query, did anyone check your SQL query? Who knows? You write a model, did anyone check your model? Who knows? You know, yeah, you did, but th there's so many things that can go wrong um, in both those cases that you have that kind of lack of peer reviews. I think peer reviews are great. They both check for uh, robustness as well as just best practices, um, especially as we become more data-driven and companies become more data-driven. I think this is very valuable. Um, testing, uh, I think there's kind of a lack of production level testing. I think, especially since a lot of data people are either uh, data analysts or data scientists, I think there's kind of a lack of testing uh, mentality that, that comes about with that. Again, some, some data scientists are more software engineering heavy, but some are, came from you know, backgrounds in economics where maybe the QA wasn't part of your curriculum or, or even part of something that you do. But again, it really depends on your team and their experience. And so having some sort of clear testing practices, I think is always good. Um, and then deployment, um, deployment. Yeah, I've seen some manual deployments, right? Like you just have someone that pushes code very manually, um, whether it's through just 
copy pasting it to your dev Linux box or, or something similar to that. Um, or just running everything on prod, right? Because there's always some middle line here. Um, you know, larger companies will generally have more process one way or the other, uh, where smaller companies, you know, the benefit is you can move faster. Um, but making sure you have some sort of clear CI, CD uh, practice for producing dashboards, ML models, uh, reports is, is key because it ensures that the products that you develop are robust and supportable in the future. And finally, uh, for monitoring, the problems I'll usually see here is no logging. So you can't track if something goes wrong or why something goes wrong. And then no defined KPIs. Um, again, I talked about this earlier, like you want to track something uh, that ties to whatever the model is supposed to drive. Again, it could be sales, it could be conversion rates, uh, whatever it might be, you need to be tracking something just to ensure that, hey, is this model even doing what you think it is? Um, is it improving the uh, metric or bottom line or whatever it might be in a way that makes sense? Um, if you're not tracking that, why'd you build the model, right? Like there's you're just hoping that it's going to work and you're unsure with like really data-driven companies is they track this stuff because they know that if they track it, um, that's where they're going to learn. They're going to learn to build better models. They're going to learn to build better systems. Uh, no traceability kind of also fits in the uh, logging category somewhat, but a little more uh, definitive in terms of it's often uh, being able to trace the exact variables and data inputs that went in to produce an output. Okay, and with that, I pretty much ended the video. Uh, I'm just leaving you with this open-ended question. You know, how can we improve the process? Uh, that's something you can ask yourself, uh, you know, at your own company, uh, on your own team, how can you improve your data process to ensure that you're building robust, supportable, maintainable pieces of data infrastructure in the future, whether it be a model or a dashboard. Again, thank you so much for listening. Uh, I really enjoy talking through this, uh, please. If you like this concept, I'm thinking, talking a little bit more about uh, data products and how you know people can build them, different steps, et cetera. You know, uh, so do let me know. And with that, uh, see you guys next time. Bye.